Hello students, welcome to course on Python application programming. This is the first video on the course Python application programming where I am going to discuss why should we learn to write programs. Before starting the discussion, let's see what you are going to gain at the end of watching this video. Dear students, by the end of this video, you will be able to explain why should we learn to write programs. You will be motivated to learn creative programming. You will be able to briefly explain the use of CPU, main memory, secondary memory and a network connection with respect to a computer. And lastly, you will be able to explain the skills required for a programmer. Let's start the discussion with a very basic question, why should we learn to write programs? Dear students, writing programs or programming is a very creative and rewarding activity. How a programming is creative and rewarding activity that we will see before the end of this video. There are many reasons to write programs such as solving day to do problems, gaming, communicating etc. There are many electronic gadgets out in the market which help us in our day to day activities and are called personal assistants or to be specific personal digital assistance in short called as PDS. For example dear students, so before 1967 there were no ATM machines at all in the world. A banking customer wanted to withdraw money, he or she had to go to a bank that to during a banking hours to withdraw the money. There used to be many problems like waiting in a queue and some counting errors. Even there used to be a only one or two cash counters and a person has to reach his or her specific banking branch to withdraw the money. All these now have been solved by installation of a ATM machine. ATM machine is a combination of mechanical electronics and computer science. It's an electromechanical device which is controlled by the program written within it. Some of personal assistants are computer, mobile phones, digital watch, etc. Dear students, the hardware of a present computers continuously ask us the question, what would you like me to do next? If you consider a personal digital assistant, it will be having a number of questions like what next, what next, what next. As a programmer, you should tell it continuously what to do next. Dear students, programmers add an operating system, in short OS and a set of many other applications to make a PDS more useful. Our present computers are very powerful and could help us only if we know how to speak to them. The kind of things computers can do best are often the kinds of things that we human beings find boring. Say for example, say ask to a cashier, they'll say that say, the, their work is boring as continuously they'll be just counting the currency. Or say for example, dear students, if I tell you to count number of occurrences of a word in a page or a book, say for example in a page, once or twice you will be you will do that with some interest. But when it, it's been repeated again and again, you will get bored and once you get bored, the accuracy with which you are going to count will not be there right from the starting to end. Often the accuracy goes on decreases. But that will not be the case with computers. Whether a computer is going to count for the first time or the last time, its accuracy is going to remain constant. We can use a computer system to do such activities. Building useful, elegant and clever programs for others to use is a very creative activity. A PDA which is called as Personal Digital Assistant usually contains many different programs from many different groups of programmers each competing for our attention and interest. Programmers try their best to meet our needs and give us a great user experience in the process. In some situations, when we choose a piece of software, the programmers are directly compensated because of our choice. Dear students, you may ask how this is so. For example, some Android device if you take, when you download some application and install it, oftenly that application may show some ads and say because of showing those ads a third party may going to pay the programmer and even to use some of the applications you may need to purchase it. So this is how a programmer will be directly compensated for his work. 
If we think of our programs as the creative output of a group of programmers, then figure 1.2 below is a more sensible version of our PDA. If you think dear source, this is a PDA, personal digital assistant. Inside this, our programmers will be talking to us like pick me. Dear students, if at all you want to download some application, when you go to a play store on Android device, you will type the name of the application and when you type the name below that, it will go into list so many number of applications. It will be something like that in that list, every application will go to tell that yes, install me, pick me, pick me, something like that. So you can consider your PDA as if so many numbers of programmers will be talking to you through that PDA. Dear students, for now, our primary motivation is not to make money or not to please end users. Instead, we focus on handling the data and information that we will encounter in our lives. When we first start, we will be both the programmer as well as the end user of our own programs. Dear students, we don't write programs to please others or to make any money out of that. Whatever the programs we write, so it's for us only. We only use those programs. As we gain skills as a programmer and programming feels more creative to us, our thoughts may turn towards developing programs for others. When you gain such skills, definitely dear students, you can write such a programs where you will be rewarded for your work. Now, with this, we'll move on to the little bit introduction to the computer hardware architecture. Dear students, already you are very well aware of computers and inside it, different parts of the computer. But as a completion, little bit I'm going to discuss the computer architecture. A computer architecture will have different parts like input and output devices, central processing unit, in short CPU, main memory, secondary memory and network. So central processing unit is responsible for asking the question, what next? And say the software will going to reside inside the main memory, say which will be processed by the central processing unit, which is called CPU. This is the hardware architecture of any computer system. The CPU is a part of a computer that is built to be obsessed with what next. It will be continuously asking what next, what next. If a computer is rated at 3.0 gigahertz, it means that CPU will ask us the question what next 3 billion times per second. Dear students, if at all you want to answer to that particular question, you should answer 3 billion times per second to what to do next. The main memory is used to store information that the CPU needs in a, a hurry. Means whatever your solution or whatever the answer you want to give for what to do next, that answer should be stored in a main memory. Every time the CPU will ask what to do next from the main memory, you, it should be given to the CPU, says do this, do this. The main memory is nearly as fast as CPU. But the information stored in a main memory vanishes when the computer is turned off. Because of that, to store the information, even in absence of power, we require some other memory, which is called as a secondary memory. The secondary memory is also used to store the information, but it is much slower than the main memory. Normally, a secondary memory, CPU will get the answers for what to do next from the main memory. In turn, main memory will fetch this from the secondary memory. The advantage of secondary memory is that it can store information even when there is no power to the computer. Examples of secondary memory are disk drives or flash memories like pen drives, USB sticks, etc. And dear students, the input and output devices are simply our screen, keyboard, mouse, microphone, speaker, touchpad, etc. IO devices help us to interact with the computer. Means whatever we want to tell to the computer, will be given through the input device and the output of the computer will be seen on the output devices. These days, most computers also have a network connection to retrieve information over a network. Dear students, we can think of a network as a very slow place to store and retrieve data that might not always be up. Means, if at all say for example, the data is stored onto some Google Drive, you can access it only when the Google Drive server is on all the time. We can think of a network as a slower and unreliable form of secondary memory. Why it is slower? Because so it has to be fetched from a storage device which is very far away from a computer system. And why I am telling unreliable because say we cannot guarantee that a 
that particular storage will be up all the time even it requires a internet connection there should not be any disturbance in a internet connection because of that we'll say it's a unreliable form of secondary memory as a programmer our job is to use each of these resources to solve the given problem it is at our best to make use of these resources to give the solution to the given problem as a programmer we will mostly be talking to the cpu and telling it what to do next sometimes we will tell the cpu to use main memory secondary memory network or io devices dear students this is where a role of a programmer comes into picture you can think of a programmer is residing in a main memory and whenever computer cpu ask what next the programmer should tell it what to do next we need to be the person who answers the cpu's what next question but it would be very uncomfortable to shrink an a person down to 5 mm tall and insert into a computer to issue command 3 billion times per second so instead we must write down our instructions in advance we call these stored instructions a program and the act of writing these instructions down and getting the instructions to be correct is called programming dear students as a programmers we need two very important skills first we need to know the programming language in this particular case python we need to know the vocabulary and the grammar we need to be able to spell the words in this new language properly and know how to construct well formed sentences in this language and the second is we need to tell a story in a writing a story we combine words and sentences to convey an idea to the reader dear students here reader means the computer story means a program there is a skill and art in constructing a story how best the story will be that best a reader means a computer will understand and does the work as i told in programming our program is the story and the problem we are trying to solve is the idea for example for any problem we are supposed to write a program to solve that problem so dear students with this let me end this video if you come across any doubts or difficulties you can ask those doubts and difficulties in a comment section of this video and in next class i am going to start variables of a python application programming thank you thank you for watching